Washington team. From now on, welcome to Mal Pope Show. That's I'm a believer. Well, we look back and we look forward tonight, the new and the old. From Cardiff, we've got the Dostoevskys. From Bryn Mawr, we've got Hugh and Tony Williams. From the world of jazz, we have Stan Tracy. We look back with the Stranglers and we look forward with a band called Horse. But first, will you please welcome the Guitar Orchestra? Yay! <laughs> Nice Hi. to meet you, Chris. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. I'm going to have to be careful here because you've got probably yeah. more leads than your average police investigation, haven't <laughs> you, really? But... A few leads and pedals, yeah. Now, the, the guitar orchestra, well, there's four guitars and, and the odd man and out. And Ricky, yeah. Yeah, I see. So he, he makes up the rhythm section. Yeah, absolutely. What's the idea behind it? What, what have you got that's so different to everybody else? Well, the idea behind it is that every sound we make, apart from Ricky, is made by real guitars. No synthesizers. We use like lots of effects, delays, reverbs, things like that, but not plugging into synthesizers, and, but extending the normal sounds you would hear from a guitar into things that you wouldn't expect. Okay, to hear. so unusual sounds. Now, 
You've all got these funny boxes on the back. Yeah, what, well, what does that do? Well, this is a thing called a Sustainiac, which basically... Sustainiac? Sustainiac. Oh, right. Sounds like a heavy metal monster, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it basically feeds back to the guitar what I'm playing. So right. it's a bit like standing in front of a Marshall stack, 100 watts, and so the guitar then resonates with what I'm playing, so that means I can lift off into feedback at very low levels. And you can do it in the bedroom, can you? You can do it in the What's bedroom. What's it sound like? Well, it sounds a bit like this. That sounds pretty loud to me. <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, how difficult is it to, to write for everybody, to get everybody a part? Um, it, it's quite difficult to synthesise down the recordings, because the recordings have many more parts on, so it's quite difficult to actually do it with this amount. So everybody's actually quite busy creating different textures and, and layers, you know. OK. Well, it'd be nice to hear how you've put the whole thing together. What are you going to uh -huh. play? We're going to play a track called Aperno for the Bamboo Man. These are the bamboo men here. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, tubular steel bamboo men. OK. Ladies and gentlemen, the Guitar Orchestra. <laughs>
Orchestra. So bands come and bands go. Some really leave their mark, like the Stranglers. Typical rehearsal session for the Stranglers. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really sort of ring true, but that, that's, that was the whole thing about the Stranglers, I felt. Because I was growing up, I was in, you know, the end of the, my senior school years when you started. And you guys could actually play, didn't you? Well, we're trying to, yeah. I mean, we're trying to, we could just about play. I mean, it wasn't a prerequisite to play it in those days, uh, fortunately, but we could actually play. And uh, um, the best musician in our band was the keyboards player at the time, Dave, who well, still is our keyboards player. And uh, I think uh, we got a bit of stick for being able to play. A bit fact. posh, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, it wasn't politically correct at the time. Were you? For being trying to be a bit melodic occasionally at the same time as well. Were you supposed to be punks or new wave, or, or was it just you were making music at the same time as that happened? Well, we, it coincided. I mean, over, uh, the audiences overlapped, attitudes overlapped. Um, we didn't, uh, at the time, we weren't calling ourselves uh, a punk band, but we were quite grateful to be. Um, part of, a, of something that was happening at the time. I considered myself to be the punk in the band, but uh, the others were a bit wary of that label. And um, uh, the purists in the, in the punk, um, whatever, you know, in the punk pantheon, didn't consider us to be punks because we were about uh, four or five years older than, and we were in our early twenties, and they were in their teens, most of them. Well, how difficult was it then to to join a band which everybody has grown up with? I mean, yeah, as I said, I went through school with the Stranglers and you know through university. So did I. Yeah, did you? You were yeah. a fan, of course. Who wasn't a fan in those days? You know, whatever you want to say. I was a fan and uh, felt it very important to continue. Really, so and it's not a problem joining a band whose music you love anyway. So. People go into to the music shop. They always play the classic lines, don't they? There's, there's jump the from roots. yeah, jump from the Van Halen band which you played on synthesizer. Now one of the, the yeah, the bass one. Do you remember coming up with that? Yeah, I do. It's a great story. I mean, I don't know if you've got time to. Yeah, it's about a two minutes story. Uh, in the early days, we had a five six hundred watt PA uh, that we, which was ours, and which we tried to, to use to its maximum. And sometimes we were asked to augment um, other PAs and stick it alongside them. We earned about 10 quid, 20 quid that way. And one day, Hugh and I were asked to uh, augment um, a sound system, a dub sound system in Acton, Acton Town Hall. And uh, we were the only two white boys there. Um, and once we'd set up this, uh, the system, uh, it was uh, you know it was like a lot of dub stuff um, with like just a bass, you know, bass speakers everywhere. And the guy would be toasting, you know, just um, sort of, yeah, yeah, over a backing uh, rhythm. And I'd never heard this before. This is 1975, 1975. I'd never heard this since sort of King Tubby J -A, of J.A. You know, King Tubby uh, was the big studio doing that kind of stuff. Not just, uh, you know, they did just do it with a guitar, ding, 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 the bass, and, boom, 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 and sort of. Anyway, that day, that, that night, we went back to where we were living couldn't believe what we'd heard, just nothing but bait, boom, 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 you know, with a guy with, with lots of delay. And next day I came up with this uh, bass riff. I just wanted to do the same as these guys. But I, we, so the whole band started rehearsing this, uh, this thing. With a bass riff. And of course we got it all wrong because the, we didn't suss out the snare is on the third beat on a reggae thing. Right. <laughs> And we were doing it just an ordinary two four rock thing, rock, rock. so it didn't didn't get get it quite right. But we had the space idea right, but didn't it didn't quite have the feel of a reggae song. But that's how Peaches uh, turned up. And it started well. It just went. It just started. <laughs> Some gangster posse music was at yeah. the time. <laughs> that was very simple, just space. You 
least at the front. I'm an aging part. I think I'm an aging part. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, you can't just uh, ram stuff down people's throats and, mm. and expect them to. Oh, this is fantastic. He farted. Wow, piece of art. So it'd be nice to hear the type of thing you're doing there. Can we do the show <laughs> right here? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the extract is called Country. <laughs> But uh, yes, yeah, just not this together in the lavatory. I'll take you down, down to southern mountains where streams wash away our sins and waters from heaven, and you will be with me. In that place by the sea A dream I know I must have been here once before Send me back Back to southern mountains There I just was Instead of always being And you in your way Made me long for other days And dreams I know I must have been here once before And was your mother always beside you when you kissed me I thought I saw Shadows creeping past your eyes Maybe they were mountains Great. Well, I think that's brilliant. That was totally unrehearsed, by the way. Yeah. 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 Time now for some new music from a new band. Their brand new single. Please welcome Horse.
Yeah. Now, when I said a new song, that was right. When I said a new band, not quite right. You know, we're a bit <laughs> older than that. <laughs> <laughs> older. How, how long have you been going? Uh, ooh. Forever. A few years now, probably about oh. ten. Yeah. But it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought five more like that. Oh, yeah. But it takes a long time to actually keep the faith and keep on going. And keep yeah. on going from Scotland as well. Um, yeah, any sort of city that's out of London, you generally have to work very hard at getting interest. Um, we're lucky, though. I mean, we have a good following in Scotland. We have a lot of people who really support us there. Because we, we've, we've talked to people from Ireland, and they seem to have got it sewn up there. You can actually start in Ireland and make it elsewhere. In Scotland, is it the same? You know, you think of bands like Simple Minds and, and of those type of bands. They can, they can work there and make enough money to carry on living. Uh, there isn't a big enough network support network of distribution etc there, there are um, labels which people have started up but they can only go so far um, you don't have the big record companies yeah. amounts of money basically to distribute things but you, you're doing all right I, the, the one thing I was strange I, I thought it's a great name for a band called horse then I focused down <coughs> you are called horse that's right yes that's oh me my there, God. There we are. what a great name all right we're gonna have more thank you from horse in the company this is horse <laughs> Time for us to take another break. There'll be more music from Horse. There'll be music from Stan Tracy as well. See you in a couple of minutes. Yeah.